Yeah, I can't operate that thing. All right. Welcome, welcome, people. We'll let you, uh, everyone, populate, find the link to this week's live. Hopefully, everyone out there is having a good week. We're wrapping up the last couple little little bits in here right now. So you'll be stuck with just me for the first uh, few minutes here. That's okay. We've had some exciting, fun stuff going on at the winery this week. More and more blending. Uh, locking some good 15, 16 hour days. Doing that here in the cellar, but it's nice and air conditioned. Not to say that it's been bad outside because the weather has been pretty spectacular this week. Lots of 70s, nice breeze, um, pretty, pretty wonderful. We're, heat's, heat's coming now. We'll be uh, looking like triple digits next week. Yes, uh, warm, super warm, super hot. We had a couple of weeks of 90 plus, and uh, now we're going to have a good week of 100 plus. Yeah. Uh, but uh, I was just strolling through the vineyard today, and uh, the growth is massive. You can see the color changes between what just pushed out and what just was already there, and it's a few feet. Yeah, yeah. it's been it's been uh, picking up steam for sure. My uh, small planting at my house, I'm uh, all <coughs> all head train and go blay, so it's time to tie stuff up because it is starting to drag yeah. down and. And on the ground, all the Syrah is flopping pretty heavily. The Grenache, always a very sturdy grower, so it stays pretty upright. Nice. You guys are joining us. We're still kind of letting everybody hop on, uh, including producer Brandon, who's getting, getting set up right now. Get set up. And we'll be rolling here in just a moment. Looking forward to it. Very excited for today. Yeah, absolutely. Great guest. And, uh, oh, we'll man. Let that dish is food. no joke. Wow. <laughs> I, I have I no see outside taking pictures of it the entire day. I was not. I was like, I'm gonna be out here the entire day taking pictures of this. <laughs> oh, so, so you should. Someone should eat it. You shouldn't just well, be taking I pictures know, of I it know, all day. But, but you it's, know what? How much of food is eating with your eyes? Agreed. But eventually, my stomach's gonna <laughs> beg to differ. <laughs> 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 yeah, for sure. Exactly. Yeah, I don't just go. I don't go to a place and just look at pictures on a menu, Brandon. You don't? <laughs> no. Is it weird that I order dishes and like, thank you, I'll take this to go now? Yeah. <laughs> just, sometimes my diet just consists of walking, and I'm like, you know what? I'm gonna save this as. Yeah. Like I said, I worked restaurants for a little while, and I, I was involved in a few like shoots of the plates, and there is probably nothing less appetizing than watching a picture uh, being taken. Of a plate that sits there for oh, for some time and right. spray a little mist on this <laughs> and right, right, you know right, dress yeah. it up this this it's and that way. <laughs> yeah, I kind of changed my outlook on on some and of the photos. Most of the time, you know, like you always try to undercook either the fish or the meat so it doesn't look like dry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You're like, I don't know about that dish. It looks good on the picture, but <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna eat it. <laughs> exactly, exactly. So, Brandon, you ready to roll? Ready to roll. All right, let's kick this thing off. Welcome to another Saturday Live here at TH. Um, thank you again for joining in, you guys. Thanks for uh, all the support uh, over the last, how many weeks is it now? I lose track, days, weeks, like months, weeks, yeah. um, uh, sometime. But you guys have all hung in there for us, um, you know, keeping the lights on and keeping everything cooking out here, which we greatly appreciate. Uh, lots going on out here this week. We logged some, uh, as I mentioned, you know, kind of in the preamble there, some uh, 15, 16 hour days of throwing some wines together, um, some long days, uh, early days out in the vineyard for you, I'm sure, getting out yeah. there. Um, we're trying to get everything in the vineyard prep for bloom, yeah? Yeah, we're just about, <clears throat> I mean, it's definitely, you see the first signs there of the berries uh, pushing the first little uh, twigs there. So, I mean, we definitely. Maybe a week to ten days. I it's would say probably less than ten days. Yeah, starting to see um, it in some of the warmer pockets and some of the earlier flowering yeah. flowering varieties for sure. Are I other mean, vineyards? Yeah, the pig pool is ahead, and then the Grenache is right behind it. Um, the pig pool has uh, tons of fruit. <laughs> this this viral is just insane. The amount of fruits. It's probably as much cluster that there is leaf on that plant right now. It's insane. Uh, but we'll go through that later and, and trim that off. Uh, 
making sure that we don't get too much damage with the wind while flowering. But yeah, so definitely, uh, definitely a lot of things going on. And uh, the great thing is, when flowering is happening, we're not allowed in the vineyard. <laughs> <laughs> so I get a back couple to, days off. Back to the air conditioning. <laughs> yeah, a little few, few less hours that week. Um, uh, we'll, I'll, I'll believe that when I see it. Yes, we are actually. Uh, on welding projects uh, that brings up kind of our my at least my take on wine news this week pass was starting to get the green light on opening some stuff up um, it is really limited right now and we're really limited in what we can provide for us personally we don't have a kitchen here so we're not allowed to open for tastings we're still open for uh, pickups and purchases and you know mm -hmm. you want to drive by and and uh, meet us in the parking lot I'm happy to haul some wine out for you uh, it's definitely something we can do. Not fully able to open uh, for tasting experiences yet, but we have been logging a few hours, uh, quite a few hours already, planning on what the new experience is going to look like, and it's mm -hmm. some pretty exciting stuff. I don't want to divulge too much because you know I got to leave you hanging a little bit, uh, but some really fun stuff, and we're utilizing sections of the property that we have not utilized for just regular tastings before in the past. Right. So really um, looking forward to it. Really excited about what this new iteration. Of, uh, of kind of wine tastings here at the estate are going to look like. Uh, some really fun stuff moving forward. Um, yeah, definitely. And, and, and that's tied in with some of the welding as well. So Yes, uh, <laughs> yes. We will but, be... We'll be constructing some stuff. Nothing that, um, yeah. nothing that was of too much danger to you. Right, for fortunately. sure. Fortunately, for sure. But uh, yes, we will. We'll be uh, building some stuff for that as well, uh, and then kind of putting the final tweaks on on what the experience itself will entail. Yeah, and we keep you posted on the updates anyway. Uh, I mean, as soon as we are, you know, ready to go and and allowed to to go ahead with it as well, we'll be emailing, posting on social media, and and reaching out to everybody to. Uh, to let everyone aware of what's going on. Yeah, we'll, we'll continue to do the lives, like as said before. It might not be Saturday. We've been, we've been uh, kind of pushing towards Tuesday at 5 o'clock here uh, Pacific time mm -hmm. um, to do some of the live stuff. And as things open up, you know, who knows? We've been inviting everyone out here. Maybe we'll start crashing some some people's places in town. I would like that. Um, uh, yeah. Hang hang out hang out at the uh, some lovely restaurants in town and Can't check wait. out what the new dining experiences are going to look like here in Paso because that's changing too. Yeah, absolutely. Some new rules and regulations in place. So it's pretty cool. But all in all, I think providing um, some really fun tweaks to stuff. I'm really yeah. looking forward to it. I think that that um, Paso. Is a, is a great community because everyone collaborates together on stuff. There's some really fun ideas that are being thrown around right now. And I honestly think that we come out the other end of all of this with an even stronger Paso experience for people coming to the area. So really looking forward to it. Uh, really looking forward to, to all of the developments that I keep hearing about, mm -hmm. um, you know, including some, some sidewalk dining and some extra yeah, kind of outdoor dining. We've got amazing weather at night here in Paso. It's one of my favorite things. You kind of hit summertime. Midday is cranking mm -hmm. hot, but you uh, sun starts going down. You get the breeze that kicks in, and being outdoors is fantastic right around that time. Definitely, definitely. I mean, you get those shift of temperatures. I mean, again, next week going to be in the 100s, but at night it's 55 to 58 degrees. So fantastic, beautiful. Perfect. So let's, let's, we'll hop into the 13 five blocks to start. Right before I get into that, I do want to congratulate last week's winner, uh, Alex Hamlow. Congrats, Alex Hamlow. And by the way, Alex is a rock star triathlon. Right. <laughs> it was awesome. I did stalk him a little bit. <laughs> that makes sense. <laughs> we've had we've had a brief history. We had David who works here as well, who yeah. was who competed in triathlons. Um, you know, so we got cool. that. Me, my my triathlon would probably be like a beer, <laughs> a wine, and a whiskey. <laughs> my my three my my <laughs> three. If I'm gonna be honest, I love running. I agree. <laughs> not not a, not much of a swimmer. You know, you can get me on a bicycle; it's fun. But I'm more likely to like try to find something to jump and ride off of than I am ride for a long <laughs> like distance. Like a 50 mile ride. Like yeah. Over. yeah, yeah, yeah. So I'll stick to my three drink triathlon. Uh, <laughs> that's probably more more I could do. But congrats, Alex. Yeah. This week we will have two winners. We up the ante a little bit this week. So there'll be two questions coming through. I've got it a little more organized in my head. Uh, so the question will be ready rapidly this week. So be yes. ready. It's going to just pop in on you. If you we post, I post the run order each uh, each Saturday, 
if you if you watch that, it gives you a little sneak peek of where things are at and what to tune into. Because we know oftentimes you're here for the chefs. You're not here for us. But that's okay. <laughs> it's okay. I'm here for the chefs as well, um, uh, especially yes. this week. So um, looking forward to it. Pay attention. Question coming. But right now, 13 five blocks. And a little mm. history on the five blocks. Uh, we started, it was a blend that was created uh, actually to be a Moved forward blend. The hope was always to have that be the leading varietal in the blend. We just don't grow that much of it. And Moved can be really finicky year to year. So for it to be a the honest star of the show, it has to be the right year. And we have to have the right yields. And really for what we have planted, it just kind of ended up being a really like a wonderful backbone to the wine. And to me, I still illustrate this wine. I show this wine when I, like if I'm in the taste room pouring is a wine that really, it, it does showcase Moved, even though it's not the primary um, a component of it, but the, the body of Moved, some of the fruit, you know, plum kind of components mm-hmm. and plum spice and some of the, uh, some of the ample tannin from that is kind of evident in this wine. Yeah, and the, the, the reason uh, why it is not yet uh, a Moved for World wine is really tied to the vineyard. I mean, that Moved blocks have been going through the past 10 years, constant changes, renewal. We had multiple issues with it over the years. Uh, and so it really never came fully operational. And so every two years, three years, we had to pull it. We had to replant it. We had to regraft on it. It's just all over the place with that. Um, so that's one of the reasons why the Moved was always on the little short end there. I, I gotta um, say though, I really like, I love the idea of Moved for wine. I love Moved yeah. as a varietal, but I will say that, um, this, you know, by, by what mother nature has given us and by kind of what's been going on in the vineyard for years, being a Syrah forward blend, uh, I love, love, love Syrah backed by some Moved and just throwing in a little bit of Grenache here and there. Um, it's a fun leader instead of just kind of your Grenache being the, the forefront mm-hmm. of the blend. It's kind of nice to have the Syrah be the dominant force on there and then, you know, kind of add a little pop with some, some Grenache in terms of acid and add that, that nice backbone with the Moved. Now, the Five Blocks is called the Five Blocks for originally what was the composition of the Five Blocks uh, was five different vitals that we pulled from the property here. So you mentioned Syrah, Moved, Grenache. Uh, but there was two more on, on the property that we were growing before uh, we pulled it out and replaced it by uh, the five blocks, uh, by the uh, Moved, I'm sorry. Uh, but Simso uh, was one of those, and Kunoaz was the other uh, component of that wines. And these were running only the first couple of years until the Kunoaz and the Simso were pulled out to make room for some of the Moved. So there's a little background on the name there. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so let's hop in. 2013. Um, you know, 12 was a really big year. 14 is a really big year. 13, we see some natural kind of a little bit of natural uh, elegance and a little reservation just from when it comes from the vineyard and from that particular vintage. I agree. I mean, I just had a, a quick, quick taste of the 14 this morning and big contrast between the 13 and the 14 for sure. Um, I like the four, the thirteen the way it stands. There's nothing nothing bad about it right now. I think it's it's not quite mature yet. Uh, there's still tons of acidity. It has nice grasp on the finish there. Uh, I feel like the chef was mentioning when I tasted with him earlier this week. Uh, it's just you still the the fruit is there. You know it's very approachable, um, and and I think it tastes really nice for a seven year old wine. And I can see longevity on that, no problem as well. Yeah, it's still. I mean. You would, I would still easily put this at, at early maturity, maybe barely kind of creeping into its mm-hmm. prime um, uh, at that point. And so um, remarkably fresh fruit for, for the uh, length of time. Uh, and it's, it's a delight, honestly, mm-hmm. really well balanced right now. Yeah. If, you, if you've got this, you can definitely get into it right now. Right. Um, it's got, still got good tannin to it and the good acid. So, I mean, this is going to play really well with food. Um, but it's it's sipping really nice, so it's good as a cocktail right now as well too. Yeah, absolutely. This so uh, really nice. yeah, you got it, then get into it. And if you don't got it, you we can't have it. it. <laughs> we have it. We do have it. I mean, a limited amount I mean, left. We yeah, have, we have uh, twenty two packs left of the 13, 14, and seventeen that you can get onto the website right now. Nice. So. Absolutely. So Please. check that out. Yeah. Do you have any further comments on the thirteen? No, I'm good. Um, I'm gonna let my spot to the chef now. Yeah, because uh, I know he's got things to say. 
and uh, about the food team in particular and also the dish that he has prepared. So You bet. Nice. Thank you very All much. Right. And I'll see you guys with a 14 later. 14 later. Maybe a surprise one at the end. <laughs> All right, so for our guest today, um, we have the wildly popular um, uh, Julian Asseo uh, of Le Petit Canine. Uh, oh, as soon as whispers came in that you were coming into town, Hello, everyone. Uh, everybody was getting very, very excited about it. Oh, yeah? Um, uh, yes. Are you sure they're, they're excited for me, not for the wine? <laughs> <laughs> I'm very sure that they're excited for you. So what did you prepare to pair with this 13 uh, five box? So today we have a, a dish that kind of uh, made our uh, our opening menu uh, or something very similar. Uh, and so we have a, a thick cut uh, bone in pork chop uh, that I actually got from our local um, butcher shop, JNR Meats. Uh, they do an awesome job in uh, you know in Paso and Templeton. And uh, so we crusted that with some uh, fennel pollen that we harvested actually last year off the coast uh, of uh, Cayucos, uh, which, you know, for me, it's just such a great combination that I discovered not too long ago, like pork and, and fennel, especially pollen, you know, which is very vibrant, uh, floral, and almost sweet too. So, you know, it's a great addition to the pork shop. And then, obviously, being a French chef and owning a French restaurant, um, you know, mashed potato, heavy buttery mashed potato is um, it's kind of the foundation of our, of our cuisine. So... You know, we uh, we did a beautiful um, creamy, buttery mashed potato to go with it, and then we uh, because again of you know how how the wine tasted, I, I believe that it had enough uh, fruit and acid to to tackle on the on the sauce that had a little bit of acidity to it. So it's it's kind of like a shallot uh, mustard um, sauce, uh, which uh, you know kind of helps cut the richness of the potato and and the pork, and I think pairs very well with um, with the wine we're tasting right now. It sounds absolutely lovely. Um, I have not actually had anything with fennel pollen, so i um, very intrigued by that, very intrigued by that. By the way you describe it, I love the idea of it being on a pork chop and complimenting kind of some of the sweetness of the, of the pork there that way. Um, fantastic, fantastic. What, what inspired you to go this particular direction? Um, I mean, again, you know, for me, <clears throat> I wanted to showcase a, a dish that was kind of representative of the restaurant, obviously. Uh, and then, again, that, that would pair well with, with the wine. Um, I think at Les Petites Canailles, uh, you know, we're very um, driven for, um, you know, depth of flavor uh, and, you know, really sticking to the key ingredients that are on the plate and really showcasing, uh, you know, the few ingredients, because I, I don't want to scatter too much on the plate. You know, I want you to be able when you try, um, you know, a bite of the plate, it, it all makes sense. You're, you're, you're really um, tasting everything that's on the plate. There's no mystery flavor or mystery ingredients. So, so it's very flavor driven. And again, I think, you know, it's uh, obviously we, we tend to pair red meat most of the time with, um, with red wine. But I think because of, you know, how the, the 2013 uh, Five Block is drinking right now, I think it's got an elegance to it that, you know, where you're able to, to still use more of like a, a wider meat, even though pork is, still has a little meatiness to it. But, you know, I think it's, it's, it's elegant. It's an elegant dish uh, to go with an elegant wine. I mean, I appreciate it. Like I've said this before on here. I typically tend to do lighter meats personally. Um, uh, I'll order some steak when I'm out and about. But um, generally, as a rule of thumb at home, um, uh, you know, maybe pork, fish, chicken, something along those lines. So it's really nice to have and a really nice recipe to kind of have to pair with it. Um, do you, when you're, when you're looking, I mean, for those of you that don't know, which I imagine most of you do know, um, uh, your father is Stefan Aseo of La Ventura. So you've been around fantastic wines for a long, long time. Yeah. Um, uh, so you know your way around a wine. What do you tend to, like, what are you looking at in a wine if you're trying to create a pairing to go with it? Uh, I mean, and that's a, the thing for me that, can be a little tricky, I feel like, in Paso. It's a very red wine um, influence region. Um, and so, again, you know, with, an, with a tendency to be a little bit on the, on, on, on the bigger side yeah. because of the varietals that are used. Um, so it, it's most of the time very, um, you know, red meat driven um, uh, pairing. So for me, when I, when I, when I look at a, at a wine pairing, you know, it's also like, uh, uh understanding the wine and, uh, making sure that, you know, it's, 
it's in accordance with the with the food. They should go hand to hand. It shouldn't be just about the food or just about the wine. And so, um, you know, when I when I, it's funny because there's time when um, the chef in me says, well, I I tell my son, you know, I'm gonna cook this dish and. You have to work around me with the wine, you know. But they, for this, it was different, you know, because I tried the wine first. And so I had to, to, to kind of play and adapt um, more the other way around where, you know, kind of like it was the wine and the food should pair with the wine, not the other way around. So, um, again, you know, there's a uh, pairings are very interesting because uh, there's a ton of different wines out there. And uh, each wine got specific characteristic. Each wine pairs well with certain kind of food. Um, and so I, I find it quite fun to actually, you know, um, and like you were saying again, you know, I had the, the, the chance of growing up in the wine, <clears throat> making family, uh, even before I got into cooking, you know, it was really like wine, wine, wine. So I, I was able to have a early understanding of, you know, the, how wine tastes, how wine is made, you know, and kind of see the behind the scene part as well. So be, have a better understanding of, you know, like what grows in each region and why it makes certain wine, you know, the way they are. And so that helped me a lot, you know, when I got into the food to, um, to have this ability to, to understand, you know, what, what a pairing needs and what, what works also as well. Yeah, no, I can totally see that. Um, you have a question, Fair Producer much. B? Okay. I'm blowing up over here. You can walk someone else said, like, wow. <laughs> perfect, perfect. Hey, so a couple things, Julian. Uh, one, uh, you mentioned a lot of um, local, right? You go local. That's a double barrel question. One, why do you go local? What's, what's important to you there? And two, what kind of potatoes do you, what makes good mashed potatoes? Great questions. I mean, obviously, I think uh, local has a big importance to me uh, because of the area we're in. And if we can use local, might as well. You know, I mean, I wish I could have my entire menu be local. Uh, obviously, there's certain times where it doesn't make sense. But as much as I can, uh, I'd rather support local business, uh, you know. Uh, and again, we're in the central coast of California where we're surrounded by great meat, produce, wines, you know. So might as well utilize what surrounds us. And then... To answer the second part of the question, um, typically for me, the best potato to use for a puree are uh, Yukon Gold, uh, which tends to uh, not be as starchy and have a tendency to be a little sweeter. Um, so that's usually my go-to. I mean, the, the man, the legend, you know, Joel Robuchon, who inspired uh, me to make this potato puree, I mean, he's... He was world known for, for his mashed potato. He actually used a very specific kind of fingerlings, which are like young fingerlings. And, uh, you know, uh, obviously it's not very rational because uh, they're not good all season long and they're extremely uh, time consuming. I mean, you got to peel. You're looking at like <laughs> hundreds of potato. And, I, you know, we're not in a three mission star restaurant where I got like 30 people around just peeling potatoes. So, uh, my best bet uh, and what I've been using this whole time is uh, is Yukon Gold, you know, and the key to making a good mashed potato, I mean, you'll have the recipe on there, but it's to cook um, the potato skin on. Skin on, cold start, you know, uh, a little bit of salt and, uh, and the gentle simmer because you don't want a potato to crack as it boils because uh, the potato will absorb... Um, the, the water and it'll make the, the, the potato uh, greedy and, uh, and very watery, okay. you know, so low and slow skin on. It is a little bit extra work, but trust me, it's worth it. Cool. Nice. I love learning this caress, kind of stuff. Caress the potato. Yeah. <laughs> the potato? Caress it. You got to care for it. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. No, that's, a, that's the question that I have on that. Perfect. Perfect. That was uh, fantastic. Opposite of the Benny and June approach of just smashing it with a tennis racket. I mean, that's... <laughs> if that's what you like to do, go for it. But I don't know how the results. Will be yeah, available. yeah. No, I like that. Um, uh, care care into details is is I think what makes good food is what makes good wine. We were talking about it a little bit last week. Um, you know, being in the moment and being very um, detail orientated um, when you're when you're tackling anything like that uh, is key. And if if by all accords, I mean you you feed Cyril here at least twice a week. Um, uh, he's a great supporter. <laughs> Thank you, sir. <laughs> He, he's one of the reasons we're still open, you know. I mean. He's doing what he can. But by all accounts, um, amazing food from, from anybody and everybody in the area that I've talked to. Um, what, are you, what are you offering right now? 
Uh, well, you know, it's uh, with everything that's been going on um, for uh, the past two months, um, you know, we kind of had to rethink our, um, our concept a little bit. And uh, because we were uh, only offering to go and feeding, you know, mostly locals, uh, we decided that we actually wanted to, um, the whole slogan was, since you can't travel, we'll bring the travel to you, kind of. And so we decided to explore, uh, you know, different cultures, different kind of food, uh, and doing like every two weeks, uh, new takeovers, you know, and so it all started with um, a Greek takeover. And that had a great success. Um, and then we uh, shifted into uh, Mexican French fusion, which was very fun. Oh my gosh, and, uh, you're making this look good. <laughs> uh, thanks. And, uh, and then we, uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And then we, we did, uh, that was my, my wife idea actually. And uh, she, um, I, at first I, I was like, oh, I don't know if that's going to work. And she's like, trust me. I said, okay. <laughs> and, and it did work extremely well. So we did a, like a, a take on a Cajun uh, seafood boil, you know, and a, like so very seafood influence, shrimp and crawfish by the pound, poor boys. And that was another great hit because I think, again, you know, we offer things that weren't available around here in the area and that, you know, a lot of people like, like didn't have the, the chance to, uh, to try. So we did that. And then we launched this week uh, a chicken shack, which was everything that revolves around chicken and so we actually also started opening for uh, for lunch as well okay. so we're open from uh, noon to eight uh and so chicken shack uh, rascal chicken shack after the uh little the petit canai which translates to little rascals and it's anything from um fried chicken to rotisserie chicken to um chicken salads um so out of one protein we turn it into you know um a varietal a different Choice. Yeah, I, I have to say, I mean, it, it, in all honesty, I've talked with so many different people and w there's like an anticipation now on like, what is Julian going to roll yeah. out next? Um, uh, what's it going to be? So, <laughs> in a way, I don't want to disappoint, you know, uh, <laughs> but we are because of, you know, now that the, uh, the county has slowly started to reopen, you know, we're, we're obviously focusing on our, on our reopening, which... Um, we haven't announced it yet, but I can, I can announce it here. You know, we're, we're going to start taking reservation, um, starting June 5th. June 5th. Uh, yeah. So, you know, we're a little way out. We just wanted to make sure that we didn't rush into the reopening again. You know, we, from doing all those takeovers, we, uh, we had to take the time to actually start focusing on relaunching our official LPC menu. Right. And so we're going to reopen with... Um, you know, something very similar uh, to what we uh, had started a few months back when we opened. Um, obviously adapted to more of like a seasonal take. Uh, but still, you know, the great dishes that... No, yeah, no one was, yeah, no one was complaining. When you yeah, 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 yeah. So, I mean, again, I think, you know, it's, um, it's been super fun. Uh, again, it's something that we're going to take and maybe um continue to do maybe like on a monthly basis like do like a, a weekend takeover you know like play around that where we can still bring something fresh and fun um to everyone but uh we'll, we'll slowly uh re-enter in more of like a you know french um bistro uh take on food that we we started with when we opened back in october so one of the cool things to come. Cool. Can they, can they go online and make reservations? Or? Uh, so, yeah, I believe uh, we have opened our reservation system okay. again uh, to uh, starting on the 5th. Cool. So we will be starting to take reservation on, on the 5th. Uh, the menu will be posted uh, as soon as we uh, finish it up. So right now we're still on a chicken shack takeover. So it's, uh, it's what's online. But, uh, but as soon as uh, we can, we'll have the new menu posted and uh, as well as uh, our wine list, you know, and uh, information about how we're going to reopen and, you know, how we're going to have to kind of um, deal with that new normal. Yeah. So, but we're super excited. I mean, again, um, I can't thank enough the, the, the amazing um, local community of Paso for supporting us as much as they did. Um, allowing us to keep our doors open, really, you know, so I, again, I can't thank everyone enough. And we're just looking, you know, to, to welcome everybody back uh, in our restaurant and, uh, and share some great meals and memories together. So thank you. I made a reservation. 
Yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> there you go, you know. Because I know that. I mean, we're, you know, with limited capacity, you know, we're going to, yeah. it's going to, it's going to be pa packed and busy, hopefully. So it's, uh, it's cool. I definitely say, yeah, it was anybody, we've gotten some, we've already gotten emails and phone calls about people planning coming in on coming into town, kind of hearing that we're Paso slowly reopening the stuff. I highly recommend going and checking it out and making your reservation well in advance because it is a smaller spot. So it's, it, it's going to be a little tough to get in there. Um, uh, I'm going to try to pull some strings so I can get in there, there you um, go. with my okay. wife because we've been at home with the kid for a while. It's, we, we've, been, we've been anticipating the, uh, the day that we can get out the door uh, and enjoy some food with, um, uh, with the proprietors. It's yeah, and nice. obviously to mention, you know, even though we're going to be reopened to, uh, <clears throat> to dine in, we'll still offer um, to go. You know, and uh, especially for lunch, you know, we're going to keep a, a to-go program where you can just come in, you know, uh, grab a nice lunch, take it home or even, you know, take it to the park, have a nice bottle of wine, enjoy the beautiful, you know, uh, weather we have right now. And then even at night, you know, we'll still offer um, uh, a to-go menu for, for those who still want to uh, enjoy the food but don't necessarily want to come in for dinner. I have two going on three kids soon. Um, so I know what it's like, you know, to, uh, to go in uh, and go out. If you don't have a babysitter uh, with kids, so for us, to go is a great alternative. So we, we will definitely still be offering that as well. Awesome, awesome. Yeah. When did you when did you move to Paso? Uh, 1998. 1998. Yeah. Uh, so with my family, um, uh, when they started Lavender, pretty much, and I was 11 years old at the time. So you know, I kind of uh, grew up in Paso. Then I ended up moving back to France when I was 16 to start my whole culinary, culinary training. And then I've been gone ever since, um, you know, kind of all over the place. And then um, we were in Las Vegas with my wife for the past 10 years. And we, uh, we decided to move back last, I believe it was like last March, March of 2019, to start, you know, this dream of ours, which uh, is LPC. So we're super, super happy to be back. Uh, in Paso Robles for sure. Well, I mean, if you being here in '98, I mean, I moved here with family in '93. Um, I'm greatly appreciative of you uh, and this kind of up and coming new restaurant generation that's come to Paso, which has greatly upped the game um, uh, that was here in '93 or '98. I mean, I remember being able to get like pizza or yeah. like a corn dog downtown, and that was the extent of the culinary experience. Uh, so it is fantastic to have you bring in your a very skilled guy bringing your skills here to Paso. Uh, it's fantastic. It make it does everything um, to help endorse the Paso brand itself too. To have someone uh, as legitimate and as talented as you are here. So thank, thank you. you for that. Yeah, no, thank you. I mean, obviously, it's. Uh, I agree. A lot of things have changed in a good way. You know. Yeah. Even from like 1998 when we were here to what Paso is now. Uh, but obviously I think as a whole, you know, um, the restaurant, the food scene, the wines, I mean, you know, when we first moved here, there's maybe like 40, 50 wineries max. And, uh, when you look at the amount now, you know, I mean, it's, it's huge and, uh, I'm happy to, you know, being able to be part of helping putting Paso on the map even more. Um, because again, you know, we're all in this together. We're all in, we're all in this to make this area, um, even better and grow. And so it's, uh, it's great. You know, we're super happy to be here. No, you're definitely doing your part. Thank you. Thank you, Julian, so much for, uh, for, for popping in and sharing this and check out the recipe. Um, Carol is my wife. Uh, if you want some uh, chicken shack to go, give me, send me a text message. I'll there shoot you something go. in yeah, over there. Until eight, um, uh, <laughs> get your fix. <laughs> Um, uh, I know I'm I'm down I'm down for something Make like that. Now, though. There you go. Please, you know, uh, go on our website, lpcrestaurant.com, and uh, all the information will be on there. And uh, again, you know, we look forward to seeing everybody um, come in when we're open. Thank you again. I mean, Cheers. Nothing more you could ask for uh, <laughs> than having this gent on here. Um, absolutely fantastic foods. Um, you know, and just by all accounts, by everybody who stopped off in there, super, it's, it's a very hospitable, very friendly, very like, like amazing food, really nice environment to have amazing food in. So, um, uh, you know, it's not going to be too stuffy. It's not going to be this, it's going to be very welcoming, uh, and I highly it's an extension of our yeah. home, you know, yeah. I mean, that's how we wanted to, uh, to, to create it, you know, it's just, uh, I come from like an extremely fine dining background, um, where, you know, it can be, uh, 
like an overwhelming experience almost, you know. And um, so as much as I loved it, for me, I wanted to, when I opened uh, our restaurant, uh, we wanted to create a, a place where, you know, everybody could feel welcome and uh, come in and just, yeah, feel at home, feel the love that, you know, Paso is about. So thank you for yeah. mentioning that. Yeah, no, you bet. You're accomplishing it. I only, only bring it up because it's there. Um, uh, Good. But yeah, thank you, Julian. Absolutely, um, uh, thanks for having me. Yeah, I'll let you. I'll let you skedaddle since you're a busy guy. I know everybody. Yeah, it's nice to take a little break from the kitchen <laughs> as well sometimes. So, awesome. I'm sure. It also, gets pretty warm in the kitchen. Um, uh, we joke about being warm yeah. in the vineyards, but my time in the kitchens were it was pretty hot as well back there. Um, uh, yeah, yeah, no, for sure. It gets uh, it gets nice and warm, but again, you know, we have some nice ventilation and. Uh, but with this weather uh, getting uh, hotter outside, we can definitely uh, feel it. Uh, in the kitchen, but we have a nice AC in a dining room, so you can stay cold yeah, and, uh, yeah, exactly. and, dine, and dine with us, so we're, we're all set. Perfect, perfect, perfect. Well, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Thank it you. Was, it was fun doing this with you guys, and uh, but, um, we look forward to... Uh, You're going to see us in there, don't you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm we're sure crashing it for sure, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the, keep uh, drinking Terry Hogue wines. <laughs> <laughs> absolutely. So, all right. We'll let you snag that. Okay. Cyril, do you... Tell me. Favorite, favorite Le Petit Canai meal so far? Oh, oh man, oh, man. You got them here. You're going to have to... The steak tartare is amazing. The uh, beef bourguignon there with the beef chicks. One of my favorites for sure. I love this thing. And, and, you know, you got to go for the bread and butter. Oh, man, yeah. French restaurants. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> amazing butter. butter. <laughs> 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 butter is amazing. <laughs> and I like that attention to detail. And the Viennese sauce with the fries, that's all it is, you know. Love wow. It. Big support. Thank you, Sarah. <laughs> cheers, guys. Cheers, cheers, Thank cheers. You. Yeah, absolutely. Cool. Okay. So we'll allow producer Brandon to get back here, but I have your gift card question ready. I don't want to jump the gun on it because I can't monitor both, uh, both Instagram and Facebook from where I'm sitting. So we'll let him get back. Um, that was a ton of fun. Yeah. Um, I really enjoyed Julian. I, we, my wife and I, uh, called in cause we were attempting to kind of put the order in online and we're trying to figure out, maneuver the, the menu system. Julian answered himself, uh, <laughs> and spent a good amount of time. What I felt like was a good amount of time with us on the phone, figuring it out. Um, just a super friendly guy. Uh, all the more reason. I mean, the foods are, are reason enough, but it's just all the more reason when, when, you know, someone who's, you know, kind of Paso family and someone who's just that nice and that genuine all the time, uh, all the more reason to support it. Highly recommend it. It's going to be difficult to get in there, but it'll be worth the time that you spend. Uh, I can, can guarantee that. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, I think that's when, when I was talking to him a little bit uh, is, is what he was missing as well. People coming back to the restaurant. Uh, because it's just not the same experience when you just prep a food and then just send it to go. Uh, yeah, yeah. He likes to go around. I mean, if he's in the kitchen the day you're there, I mean, he most likely is going to step out and then just say hi to everybody. And I think it's, it's like, not only I like cooking, but I like the communication. I like to be with people and share the experience. So I'm sure he's very looking forward to it. And uh, it's always, always a fun time over there, for sure. Most definitely. So check that out. Um, in the meanwhile, let's uh, slide on over to the 14. Do you have the 14? You need to pour the 14? I will put myself a little bit on the 14. So as I mentioned earlier, the 2014 vintage, uh, bigger than the uh, 13. In fact, to date, I started here in 2015. We were pouring 2011s, 2012s. 2014 is the biggest vintage to date that um, I recall uh, for our wines here. So really, they got some good good cellar time on them. Um, you can, if you like that nice impact of the tannin, um, it definitely has the acidity to where it's not just one overwhelming element. It is in balance. Uh, it's just going to be a bigger wine. So I think that the 14s are ones that you can kind of stash in a cellar a little longer uh, you can dive into if you um, if you want as well. Like I said, if you like that impact, we're dealing with young wines all the time. So to me, this isn't something that that scares me away in the least. It's definitely not too aggressive. It's just going to be more. It's a bigger year in general. Most most of the places kind of when I've been around and tasted wines in Paso, 14 is a is a, is a fairly big vintage. Uh, 
Yeah, I mean, we went through the uh, the hedge 14 already um, on lives, and and uh, I mean the 14 vintage was is is referred as as being a big one for sure. Uh, this 14 five blocks is also the first vintage where now we strictly stick to the three vitals that are now composed it, which is the Syrah, uh, the Mauvet, and then the uh, Grenache as well. No more uh, Cunois in there, no more Cinso either, uh, just focusing on the three vitals. And so I think that's where, I feel like 14 was the first, uh, you know, five blocks has been going through tons of changes over the years, I feel like in terms of balancing and, and kind of finding his, his, his own little identity. Um, but super impressed again, like I was mentioning, uh, tasting it this morning is just such a, such a different vintage. Uh, very, very showcasing through it there. Very, very bright as well, I feel like. I mean, bright, I mean, I think you get, um, you know, the Cinso and Cunois is um, typically used in the area to kind of dial a wine back a little bit, um, which is nice. I mean, in Paso here, we can, we can have some really robust, some really big wines in there. And so the inclusion in the 13 of the Cinso and Cunois does pull back the wine a little bit. Uh, it lands in a really nice, really elegant spot. Uh, one thing I've noticed working here over the years is that what's really specific to the site here is that we get, we get a really, really nice rounded tannin profile and stuff. The, we get nice ripening on stuff, really good acidity. So, so with that acidity holding on, we keep that, you know, Phil mentioned it last week, we kind of keep the tension in the wine with the acidity uh, and the, the, we can kind of pick it a little later, mm -hmm. get, some, get some nice, um, really, really soft uh, plush tannin on the wines. So, you know, we don't lean as much on site here on, on something like Cinso or Cunois. It just doesn't make as much sense to have that in there other than just to say we have it in there. I'm not a big fan of that. Um, but... Uh, so it's not something site specific. You get some cooler sites in Paso, uh, or you get some sites that that maybe ripen really quick, and, and the phenolic ripening lags behind it. Mm -hmm. um, I could see the use of of some Cinso and Cunois again to kind of back down the tannin profile of the wine a little bit, and to kind of reintroduce a little more a little more fresh fruit and some floral components to the wine that um, that you might be missing when you're when you're ripening in that capacity. But I think that, um, you know, honestly, like I said, the wine's here really nicely rounded. Thank you, guys. Yes, you we'll bet. See you soon, okay? Take I'm care, man. Cheers, and thank, thank you for the wine. I'm still winning. <laughs> cheers. Bye, guys. Thank you. So, you know, we don't lean on the Cinco and Cunhuas as much, which is nice. Yeah, absolutely. Which is nice. Um, enjoy that. At 14, you get that shift from the 13 to where we're kind of got a little bit bigger tannin um, to it. And that, I think part of that is that, that Cinco and that Cunhuas kind of coming out those tend to be lighter lighter wines in that capacity um tend to use to kind of bolster components of of uh syrah uh, or sorry components of mauvet or grenache typically is what um what people in past were kind of using it for mm -hmm. i like the way as you swallow the wine there and finish it kind of comes back through your gum a little bit tickles it slightly i like that a lot yeah, I mean, the, the acidity, I mean, to me, when you get that tan in there, when you have the acidity that kind of like, you know, you salivate just a little bit, it mm -hmm. kind of replenishes what the tannin takes out. And that's a, a nice balance to kind of strike and to have for sure. Yeah. Um, so something that I look for, I think something that, that Terry and Jen really kind of hit on um, in both vintages. Um, the If I'm going right now with what I'm going to pop today, I got to go with the 13. Uh, yeah. Personally, I <clears throat> positively... I uh, love, love, love where that wine is at. When I worked here and we were pouring it, I did purchase plenty of the 13. Um, uh, not enough Stopped to hold on to. I still don't no. have any. No, no. It was too good. It was good even then. Uh, right now, it is absolutely fantastic. Like I said, it's kind of coming into its its peak. Uh, not peak, but it's just opening up into what will be its peak, I think, for the first several years running, um, mm -hmm. which is fantastic. The 14's tasting great right now. I think it could... It can hold on a little more time, um, for sure. So uh, there you have it. If you've got them, or if you don't have them, like I mentioned before, you can find them. We've got them. Um, yes. On to the question. You caught up, producer B. We ready to roll with a... Julian is a very, very nice, likes to talk. <laughs> he does, yeah. He's awesome. a very He's friendly guy. I think I had to go produce. You um, like to talk, too. I, it's like a <laughs> match, made, match made in heaven. Uh, yeah, I'm caught up. Yeah. All right. Okay. So, um, question number one, I will squeeze a second question in as promised before, but question number one, what was meant to be the lead varietal in, in the five blocks blend? Uh, it's not, it's a hint. It's not what it is now. 
is what was meant to be the lead bridal. So first person with that in gets a gift card. Um, we will slide forward from there. Um, so I have a... It's done. It's done, yeah. Boor, Scott, Scott Boor. Nailed Scott Boor. Congrats, congrats. Winner number one of the <laughs> that, day. That was pretty quick, too. <laughs> well done. Instagram. All right. Yeah. Nice. It was quick on it. Quick on it, that group. Okay. Um, so, congrats again. Um, five box blend. It's kind of morph. You know, we're talking about it. This is actually was, this wasn't intentional, but it, it kind of hits perfectly going from the 13 to the 14 because we start, like you said, formulating what has become the niche that the five blocks is filled um, very lovingly. I mean, I, I couldn't, we pl I played, I've played with upping percentages in Moved um, and trying to kind of get there. The 16 reserve uh, actually boasts a fair amount of the Moved. Mm -hmm. Some of that's Graciano, uh, <laughs> you know, unbeknownst at the time, but kind of unbeknownst. Um, but so try to push it towards that. And, Honestly, keep falling back to the Syrah being the dominant component. We just, you know, a little bit of Moved and like a splash of Grenache if needed for, mm -hmm. for the acidity there. Um, creates a wonderful balance um, on the wine. It's something that's got this really uh, nice intensity, but it's not overpowering at any point in time. There's no point in time where I'm kind of having something going like, ah, oh, this is getting, you know, too aggressive. I think Syrah here in Paso offers this wonderful building block to work from. Uh, and it kind of the popular popular kid in the block to work with for a building block is Grenache typically. Um, but man, some of the Syrah blends, Syrah four blends I've had in the area have been some of my absolute favorites. Uh, so it's been a ton of fun to revisit these. Um, I do have here with me uh, a little splash of the eighteen five blocks. Yeah, um, we finished kind of touches on it. If you want, we can touch on that as well briefly. Uh, yeah. Just to kind of get a comparison to where maybe 18 falls in line with past vintages here, because I have a feeling, I have a feeling of a spot, but we'll get we'll get where where you feel like we're at on it as well. What do you say? Yeah, absolutely. Let's tackle it um, for sure. And and I mean, again, I feel like the so I really like the 16s reserves that you put in together uh, the five blocks the 17 i think you nailed the 17 five blocks both the regular label as well as the reserves both taste amazing and i really like the direction we uh we going with the 18s already uh so we just yeah like you say we just finished putting it together yesterday uh decided i need a little bit of a <laughs> a little bit of a push towards the end but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm curious to see how it turns out today after sitting down a little bit, you know, in the, in the barrel there. Yeah, um, it's just some, something fun. I mean, this will be a wine featured on our upcoming release, uh, end of July, beginning of August, um, and just something to kind of keep an eye on. Um, much more heavy on the Syrah side. I should have taken the numbers, but I didn't plan that far ahead. Let's go with a last minute call on that. <laughs> But um, just looking at the color, some, you know, we're, we're inching up on the Syrah versus 17 uh, and 16. You know, I want to say kind of, I'm not going to even give off the cup numbers because it could be anywhere and everywhere in between there. Um, but really focusing on, on taking my, uh, some of my favorite Syrah lots and just giving them a, a little touch of Moved here. Um, very, very little Grenache uh, in this rendition. Just a splash to kind of keep the acidity on it, kind of keep it really a little vibrant uh, and to give kind of a little bit of the, the Grenache kind of, just a touch of the Grenache kind of nose to it. Um, but really like this, this goes into that dark fruit, um, really nicely spiced, um, ample body to this. So I actually kind of think that if, if 13 and 14 were to have a baby, it would be 18. This has got the, this has got the umph and the power of 14, um, but with just the amazing fruit uh, that you get on the 13. So it just kind of combines really my favorite characteristics to the two. I'm really excited about this wine. Um, when I had submitted blends to Terry and Jen for this, uh, the my my notes for the five box uh, and the 46 were like, you change it and you and start working on your resume because you can go somewhere else. I'm, uh, this is where it needs to be. This is fantastic. 
Uh, and so that's where it stayed. Uh, and really, really uh, excited about this wine. I, I always love Five Blocks, um, and I always kind of want to champion it. This champions <laughs> itself. Uh, it will f- for sure um, be a wine that I think everyone's going to gravitate towards. Uh, just It kind of just fires on every cylinder that it can in your mouth. Uh, and so it is, it's a party when you take a sip. It's a party in your mouth. The spice, the, the spice components, uh, I love. I love that that's coming out. I just really enjoy that. It, you smell that for sure. Yeah, I, I, I think like just sipping it, like you say, just as soon as you, it might be a little muted on the nose, but if anything, as soon as you get in your palate, just start showing up, and and as 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 it goes through as well, it just gets bigger and bigger and bigger and, and more fun. Um, there's a super nice fruit on it, like you said. I think it's it's fantastic, um, and the tannin is just right. You know, I, I'm not a big heavy, very tannic red wine guy drinker. So I do enjoy my fruits. I do enjoy the softer type of tannins. And I think this fits in uh, very, very well. Very, very pleased with it. Yeah, is it a party sure. in your mouth? Oh, it's a... Uh, <laughs> it's a little discotheque. It's a rave. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's super, super nice. Yeah, well done. Great. Thank you. Thank you. I'm ex- really excited about it. Um, we'll be excited to, uh, you know, get geared up to be able to share this with everybody. Uh, the 18 vintage in general, really, really excited about. I've been saying this to these guys, uh, anyone and everyone I've talked to, any seller that you hop into, uh, all of us are very excited for the 18 vintage coming out in Paso. I think it's going to be a, a stellar year uh, and, and one to stock up on because um, uh, they, they're going to be great out the gate. Uh, they're going to age and just continue to get more and more fantastic. Um, it's just a, re- a really fun, really vibrant year. Some yeah. of the wines expressing, uh, you know, a little more concentration and vibrance than, than we've seen in a couple of years. So looking forward to it. It's, it's funny. I think we both have <clears throat> some person attached to that 18 vintage as well. For me, it was my first harvest ever. And then for him, you know, it's the both your daughter. So it's kind of like you have personal attachment to that 18 vintage there. <laughs> so it's a super, I think, you know, it's, it's super nice to come around the entire cycle there. Um, yeah, we, we've talked, I've talked about this before. You kind of like the more time I've spent, and I, yeah, I know that you'll, you'll get in the same gear, the more like uh, vintages start to earmark moments in life and things that happen. 18 <laughs> yeah. is definitely the birth, you know, birth of my daughter. Uh, and so, you know, they'll always be, if I, if I have a wine from 2018, that will always be something there. She was, I got the phone call for when she was born, actually when processing Bassetti fruit at the, you know, <laughs> towards the very tail end of harvest. So really like the long ball from 18 is mm-hmm. going to be like, that's going to always <laughs> peak that. Cause that was the, the, the day that that fruit, you know, that fruit was processed, which is a component of it. Um, you know, that's. When I rushed off and, and handed the reins to you guys to to finish everything off, which thank you by the way, um, <laughs> we did our best. <laughs> so <laughs> it was the end. It was the end. That was November. Um, yeah. You know, so she, Faith held out as long as long as she could uh, and did a good job that way. So yeah, the um, you know I think you're right. 18, 18 marks that. Eighteen marks and you know another year where you know I'm a little more familiar and I'm a little more comfortable. I think. It's just kind of with anything else, as you get more and more comfortable with it, you're willing to kind of throw some more stuff out there to mm-hmm. to kind of risk a little more. And I think that the 18 Vintage represents a, a little more risk in terms of shifting some some winemaking techniques uh, and yielding you know some really awesome results. It couldn't have turned out. I mean, I feel like it's a really really solid vintage. Uh, running through the wines, it's an argument over what is it that's you know ultimately people want to go with. By the way, not only was your daughter born for the long ball, you also just got talked about what happened with wine enthusiasts. Well, we got scores back. They're going to be releasing them. Okay. But they turned out well. We'll just say that. I'll, leave, I'll let, let Matt Ketman and Matt Ketman's where I, you know, it's like I look forward to the stuff that, that, uh, that all these guys write. They put a, a good amount of effort in, an amazing amount of effort considering right. they cover a large yeah. uh, region. Mm-hmm. I've been to the post tastings after those guys go through the wines. It is an impressive number of wines that get that I'm um, uh, get encountered on a regular basis, but uh, 
But yeah, so, some really nice, really favorable, very uh, honoring scores from Matt Kemen coming down the road, um, which is fantastic. You know, so it's comforting, that. especially, you know, when you are the one assembling the wine and putting it together, it's they're definitely... Psh- yeah, you know, I mean, it's a, we 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 forward. Yeah, <laughs> we we showed some adaptation with with how we're picking and how we're handling the wines. It's nice to kind of have that met with enthusiasm, not just from everybody out there, the club members, all of you guys that support us, of but uh, mm-hmm. the media as well, really kind of latching on to what we're doing here and enthusiastic about it as well, which is which is fun for you know, especially. I mean, Terry and Jen had kind of a name built. My name is being attached to it. Uh, and so it's kind of like I'm sure they go and they get this, and it, you know if they're if they even recognize like what is this La, Mont- La Montagne, <laughs> yeah, some some new French guy in Paso, this, this guy. Uh, <laughs> another one, <laughs> I know, not from France, <laughs> um, but yeah, so exciting stuff that way, uh, exciting stuff coming down the lines. Moving forward, we will, like I said, keep up the uh, Saturday lives. Um, if we do need to move it, we'll move it to a Tuesday and we will give everybody as much notice as possible. The, we're kind of handling the potential of opening on a week to week basis. Cause that's kind of how we have to handle it. Um, but you know, we look forward, we're, we feel like we're starting to get close. We look forward to, uh, to honing in some new experiences and, and hosting you guys and seeing you guys again. We will keep up some live content. Um, like I said, Tuesdays, uh, at five it will be the, will be kind of. The time, if I have time to get maybe on my phone on a Saturday um, while we're hosting people, I'll do that too to kind of give everybody a little peek of what's going on around here. Um, we've loved the opportunity to get in touch with everybody this way, and we'll continue to do so. I mean, I think this has been been a something that we I've been on my heart to do for some time and a way to connect with, with everybody who can't necessarily get here. It's going to be difficult to, to get around for a while, so we're going to do everything in our power to make sure that we stay in touch, stay in contact with everybody, mm-hmm. uh, and are able to kind of continue to share what we have going on here. Last question, Absolutely. by the way. What's the last question you got there? The last question is... I had to deviate um, uh, from, <laughs> from the plan. Ah. All right. We'll go, with it. we'll go with something simple here. Okay. What protein did Julian pair with the thirteen five blocks? What, what protein? protein? Yeah. Give us a, give us a cut. Okay. Yeah. And we talked a lot about a lot about, about a lot of protein as well. So we did. There's a bit of a. Maybe it slips someone up. Maybe it's not what you. Would, it's not what I go for for at first. Which is like I said. Why I was happy that he did it. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's the question. We'll give you guys a chance to answer that uh, coming up on live content uh, moving forward. We next two blocks we have are dedicated to the pick. Mm-hmm. Uh, one of my my probably favorite wine as it's tasting right now in the cellar. Um, 2010 pick. Absolutely yep. fantastic. Yeah. I mean just it, lots and lots of kudos to, to Terry and Jen for that wine. Um, it is tasting spectacular right now. I Highly recommend uh, hopping online and picking up the three pack because that's being included along with the 13 mm-hmm. pick and the 17 pick, I believe, yeah. all for our current release price. So 70 bucks a bottle across the board. That's a huge savings on There's that on that 2010 pick. 12 packs of those left. 12 of those left. Okay, so um, we've been trying to get in the forefront here and mm-hmm. and get these wines out to you guys ahead of time so you you can taste through stuff with us. Uh, if you have any questions about the wines as we're tasting through them, feel free to shoot them. If you have any questions about um, you know wines coming up that we'll do uh, or any kind of content, if you want to reach out to us, if you order the wines and for one reason or another, heat's an issue at this time of year, we can't get them to you on time. You can reach out to us about doing some kind of, you know doing a, a Zoom tastings or virtual tastings that way. We've had those going on as well, so another option for you. Uh, anything else that you can think of until then? No, I think it encompasses everything that we uh, that we have planned. And again, more more on the next weeks, you know, and see what where things are and what things stand. Sure. Yeah, it'll be a little shifting. It is. I have uh, a good friend of mine who was actually in my wedding party, uh, Chris Klosser, who was the executive chef over at Niner for for quite some time during a lot a lot of accolades that they received. He's now currently working on a project. Uh, Orange County area, uh, I believe, kind of a new, they're opening up something down there, and uh, he's associated with that. He's on uh, for the next wine. Uh, he sent me pictures of what he was cooking the other night. Uh, 
fantastic. Absolutely fantastic. So looking forward to that as well, having him on. Um, and we'll kind of continue to roll with some chefs, with some, um, you know, local winemakers, play maybe some cork reps, barrel reps, some other fun stuff like that. Uh, we make our, our live a little more mobile, then we'll start getting out in the vineyard as well. Sweet. Perfect. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. Thank you very much. Um, you guys have a wonderful week. Uh, yeah, take yeah. care. Have fun.